All right, in this video, we're going to work on analyzing free body diagrams. So we've learned how to draw all the forces. We've also learned that when an object is on an incline, we need to break down the weight into its two components, the downhill weight component right here and the normal weight component right there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The most important thing on these problems is figuring out what forces we can actually not look at. So for starters, let's cross out the weight because the weight was replaced by these two components, so don't look at it. So this object is going down the hill. So it's traveling down this way. That means the perpendicular forces are going to balance out. Or my normal force is going to equal 18 newtons, just like the force that's exactly opposite of it. And then, that means that these I don't have to look at, because they're going to balance out. And that leaves me only with this downhill weight component of 8 newtons because there's nothing, there's no force back here to subtract from. So my net force is 8 newtons. The object was going down to the right. The extra force is down to the right. So the speed will increase just like we expect it to if an object is on a downhill. Alright, so in our next problem we are analyzing a bicyclist pedaling up a hill. So starting with what we can cross out well, let's first say that this normal force is going to balance what's exactly opposite of it, which is that. And so our normal force is going to be 723 newtons. We can cross out the weight because it was replaced by the two components. We can cross out the normal weight component and the normal force itself because they've now balanced. And now we're left with the drag the downhill weight component, and the applied force from the bicyclist pedaling. All right, so these two I'm going to combine because they're acting in the same direction, 260 newtons. And then to get my net force, I'm going to do 300 newtons minus 260 newtons, giving me a difference of 40 newtons between the forces acting in the dire direction the bicyclist is going and the force in the opposite direction. Now this 300, in my case, is greater than the force acting against the motion. So once again, the speed is going to be increasing. Watch out, your answer could come out differently. Finally, uh, or two more to go. This one says analyze the free body diagram. Very importantly, it says the speed is constant. And we know that that means that the forces are balanced, which is a result of Newton's first law. And the net force then is zero. So we're just balancing forces. Again, first step, let's cross out that weight. We always cross out the hypotenuse. Then my normal force is going to balance what's opposite of it. So 755 newtons. And my adjacent can balance out the downhill weight component. So those two will also be equal making this 390 newtons and that means every force has been balanced which is exactly what we set out to do. Let's take a look at one last problem. And this problem is a little bit different because it gives us that the speed is increasing and it gives us a net force for the first time. So start out, cross out that weight because that's the hypotenuse, it was replaced with the components. Then the normal force is going to balance out the force that's directly across from it because the bicyclist is staying on the incline. And I can cross these out as well. Leaving me with my drag, my downhill weight component, and my net force over here. All right, so to get the, um, just to make the bicyclist go with a constant speed, I would need to balance out this 260 newtons. But we want the bicyclist to have an increasing speed, which means I need an extra 70 newtons acting forward, or a total of 260 plus 70, 300, uh, 330 newtons is the force the bicyclist is pedaling with.